in a lot of places, but you're here to learn about AI. And uh, I think you're going to be glad you came here. Just throwing that out there. I went to the expo yesterday, so, you know, figured we'd learn some cool stuff. So, anyway, we're going to get this thing kicked off. I need my sponsors at the front of the room, though. If you're one of the sponsors that's speaking today, then come line up right here because we're going to start with you guys in like a minute and a half. So sponsors that are speaking, that's like everyone whose logos show up on the screen. I know a lot of them are at the expo, so we'll give them a, a bunch of them like shout outs and one, two, three claps. But the ones who are here are going to tell you a little bit about themselves, who they are, what they do. They're going to take a minute and, uh, and then we're going to kick this thing off. So how many of you guys have been here before? Raise how many? No, no, let me flip that. How many of you is this your first time at Masterclass Orlando? Raise your hand. Who here is first time? Can we all give a giant round of applause and a welcome? To everybody that's showing up for the first time, can y'all make some noise if you've been here before or if you've been to a master class before? This is actually our 58th, 58th, 57th session ever. This is the seventh session of the year. I hope I counted that right. I know we did 50 downtown. So it's pretty cool to think that it's been like six plus years of bringing together the best of the best in real estate to get on a stage and teach what they're doing to people from all different brokerages, all different business models, all different sides of town with no ulterior motives, no agenda, no recruiting, no nothing. I think it's pretty cool because I like to think that this real estate world was pretty ultra cutthroat at times. And I like to think Masterclass did at least a little bit in moving the needle from ultra competitive to hyper collaborative. And so it's really you guys. Could y'all give yourselves a round of applause real quick? Because really showing up and sharing and networking and being positive with other people from other brokerages, that's what fuels it all. It's not us putting them on a stage, but I like to think that everyone in this room has been a part of that journey. So thank you guys. We've got a handful of sponsors, by the way, that make Masterclass happen each and every month because they help not only support Orlando Real Producers. By the way, if you meet anyone in this room that is not a real estate agent, they are not here by accident. They were vetted by a top 500 agent. They were they support our platform long term and they spend a lot of time, money and energy to build relationships with the best of the best in Central Florida real estate. So if you're one of our affiliates, could you if you're one of our preferred partners, could you just raise your hand really quickly? All of our ORP partners. Y'all want to know these people with their hands up, give them a round of applause. A few of them stepped up extra to to help today actually happen in this awesome theater. So I'm gonna give each of them just a minute to explain what they do. And it's not long enough to do their entire spiel, but let's make sure you follow them, connect with them, find them after. Also, the fall season of Masterclass is about to kick off in September. You'll see the next three sessions. There's only three more sessions this year. They will show up on the screen. The next session is gonna be about short-term rental success. And so we're going to be talking about STRs and Airbnbs and how to actually work with investors, how to make more money and it's how to make more money by maximizing the Airbnb and short-term rental opportunity. We have a panel of five experts. It's going to be awesome. The following month, we'll have another women's panel, the third year in a row that will put five of the top 25 agents in greater Orlando who happen to all be women on a stage to talk about how they built their business, all elements of their business. It'll be awesome. We'll all wear pink and all the money that's raised will help the Gina McReynolds Foundation because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which I think is pretty cool. So make sure you come to that one. And then last but not least, I figured, hey, we've done this women's panel for three years. Why not do a men's panel? So for November, I said I, it's not property management, um, investors, specifically foreign investors. Um, and we've been in business for 20 plus years here in the Central Florida area. Uh, been a part of a master class in Orlando Real Producer for the last few years. But um, one of the things I want to tell you is um, a lot of times people, a lot of people know me in the area because I've been involved in this, but popularity does not make you good. Um, why we're here and why we've been able to grow as a firm is because we have the best staff in CPA accounting world, we feel, in Central Florida. So, um, and one of the things I'm going to offer to you is this, is like if you haven't looked at your financial situation and where you are tax-wise, maybe you think you're paying too much, feel free to reach out to me. We always do free consultations uh, to really discuss what you have and share what our fees would be and how we can save you money. So you guys work hard enough. Uh, to make the money you make and so you want to make sure that you're not paying too much to the IRS in tax because we don't like the IRS you don't like the IRS nobody wants to give them more money so please uh, feel free to reach out if you want to uh, uh, review your financial situation and see if we can help thank you guys 
I'm actually the opposite. I, I, I've lost my voice with this convention. Um, but my name is Samantha Melendez. I am the business development manager with um, the home team powered by Movement Mortgage. So what does that mean? I'm here to help all of our realtor partners with events, social media marketing. If you guys don't already follow me on Instagram on some pretty good real estate and mortgage humor, it's Samantha underscore home loans. We're basically here. We have all of your traditional and non-QM products. So if you haven't partnered up with a good mortgage company yet, please make sure you send me a message through and I'd be more than happy to set up a little coffee and tell you all of the amazing things that we're able to help you with your business. Thank you so much. All right, good morning everybody. I am Chance Kelly and I'm here representing Miracle Movers of Florida. I am a moving service. I provide local and long distance moving, packing. From head to toe, I can handle anything your clients need. As of right now, I have to leave here shortly and go to Golden Oaks Realty and finish up an $8 million home job that's happening over there. We take great pride in everything that we do and we can ensure that your clients will not have to pest with you. They will deal strictly with me and you will never have to worry about them ever again. So I look forward to hearing from you. If you want my information, please come back and get it. And I would love to assist any and all of your clients in relocating. If you guys happen to be a team and have a whole squadron, I would love to help sponsor a lunch or a breakfast and be able to show in front of you what I can really do to your clients. So I appreciate your time and have a lovely day. Love it. Did I hear that right? $8 million moving job? Dang. It's a big place. Uh, I'm glad I don't have to foot that bill. Um, hey, I'm Brandon with The Staging Company, and it's great to be here. Um, didn't know about the expo, so we're here. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, two things I want to mention. Same two things I mentioned last month. Last month was Vacation Rental Month at the Staging Company, and it was so amazing. I want to talk about it again. Nobody does staging or uh, vacation rentals as well as we do, and nobody provides a guest experience like we do. So if you deal with investors who flip houses and turn them into vacation rentals, call us. We can do it better, faster, cheaper than they can even do it themselves. And the second thing I want to mention is that we're still looking for uh, sales, business development people, if you love making friends and you love making money off of those friendships, also come talk to me. All right, thanks for having us. All right. All right, and real quick, let's give a one, two, three clap for a few of our sponsors that couldn't be here today. First, we'll say Monica Santiago and her friends at Assured Partners. Let's give them one, two, three. Also, the coffee was provided this month and every month by Mr. Vic DeVore from DeVore Design. They do photography and staging. They're probably one of the largest photography companies, if, if not the largest, in Central Florida. Let's give them a one, two, three. Let's see who else we're missing today. Uh, Heather Hurry and the Jeff Mackey team with Pillar to Post Home Inspections. They were the top Pillar to Post franchise in the U.S., and they thank you guys for making them that. So let's give them a one, two, three. We've also got Shea Walker with Shea Walker Photo. Let's give her a one, two, three. And David Buckles is probably out buying more homes because they buy like 10 or 15 homes a month. So if you're looking for a home buyer who makes stuff a lot easier, you should call David Buckles with Reliant Home Offer who will just make you an offer. He's an investor. He comes from the real estate world and uh, you won't have to deal with all the BS. You'll just sell the house. So let's give him a one, two, three. And then last but certainly not least, our friends with Old Republic Home Protection. Uh, if you didn't know, Camp Foster's moving to Tampa, and we will now have Jeremiah Williams, who's actually an old friend from Cutco. If you've ever met Christina that runs our closing gift team, uh, that's her husband. He's now in charge with Old Republic Home Protection. You'll meet him next month. Let's give him a one, two, three. And uh, I think that is everyone, but you know what? I got to at least shout out to pe other people. Our supporting sponsors are Richmond American Homes. We got Dave Stewart and his crew doing video with D Stewart Production. Can we give them a round of applause? Because they set this thing up every month. If you're watching this virtually or on the replay, it's because of them. And they shoot from four cameras. They edit live on the fly. So if you want to rewatch this later, keep your eyes on our YouTube page. We got our friends Mike and Natalie with CFBI, Central Florida Building Inspections. Let's give them a round of applause. And then the Apex Group, a guaranteed rate donates $250 to the charity of the month each and every month. So that's going to go to Operation Underground Railroad as part of our Orpies fundraising. So let's give them a one, two, three clap. And last but not least, sorry, I didn't mean to do that too fast, but we'll do them both at the same time, is Joe Espejo with Branding by Joe. Let's give her and the last one a one, two, three. All right, sweet. Let's get this thing going. Y'all ready to learn something? All right, because I was pretty much done. All right, Nick Krem. Nick Krem. And by the way, if you didn't figure this out already, Nick's going to speak for a while, and then we're going to throw the other people up to talk about what they're doing after. 
Cool? So Nick runs a virtual organization with staff in seven countries from his home in Sarasota, Florida. But it wasn't always that way. He started his business with his brother, Michael, after moving back into his childhood home in Cleveland, Ohio, during the winter of 2018. Since then, he's gone on to expand his real estate branding company into 13 countries and all 50 states in less than four years. He's spoken on stage with some pretty big names, some billionaires, built nationally recognized brands, provided hundreds of thousands of hours of training to real estate agents on topics such as personal branding, recruiting, and strategies to scale your business. In the past eight months of leveraging AI in their business, they've reduced their staff cost by 50% while increasing productivity and revenue with the same strategies about, he's about to teach you. He launched the Krem Institute of Artificial Intelligence after their research and development team spent thousands of hours figuring out how to apply AI to real estate. They've been featured in the US Times, New York Business Today, Moguls of Business, and much more for the work they've done to revolutionize the real estate industry and use AI, which is, as you could imagine, pretty dang new. So. Nick provides you with simple, useful, actionable items so that you can begin leveraging AI in your real estate business. And to stay up to date with it, he'll have some resources. You can follow him and whatnot. But basically, I brought him in because him and his team are the ones like studying exactly how to apply AI to real estate and then teaching it and certifying people in it. So I figured who better to bring than my friend Nick, Cl Nick Cram. Let's give him a round of applause. There's a whole damn bio. You're ready to go. All right. And then do you have the clicker too? All right. What's up, guys? Let's give it up for Aaron for a second first, guys. Let's give it up for Aaron, because I'll tell you what, doing these events are really freaking hard. And you know he's a pro at doing these events. When I called him not only like 20 minutes ago, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm at the Citrus Club. Aren't, aren't the events here? He's like, no, you just got to put it in the map, come down the road. He's like, I'll, I'll give you a couple more minutes. Like, so for someone who was doing their first event, that would have freaked them the hell, hell out, right? Like, hey, your main speaker's not here. He's way down the road, right? Well, here we go, guys. We're gonna be talking about artificial intelligence. And I'll tell you what, this topic scares the living crap out of most people in today's world. But I'll tell you what, what we're gonna be talking about is the AI real estate revolution. The big part of this is we all have decisions to make in our life, right? Decisions that affect our personal life, our business life. And our life completely changed at an event just like this. Myself and my brother who walked from where I was going to point him at, these other tall white dudes somewhere in here. My brother who's here too, we went to an event just like this. From there, we literally came back, quit both our jobs, started our own business, sold our car, moved back to our parents' house, and started our own business. From there, it was just a simple decision that we make. It sounds hard, but it was very simple, and there he is. But I'll tell you what. The decision that we all have to make now is decide to learn AI on our own and get ahead or be forced to do it later. Because whether you like it or not, you have to learn artificial intelligence. These are the decisions that we have to make. And today you guys are in the right place because we're gonna be learning how to use AI. We're also gonna, I'm gonna have some simple pro tips here for you guys as well. Everybody has the same tools, but it's how creative can we be in using these tools to use them just a little bit differently from everybody else. Right? So here's what we're gonna do. Has it that sounds like, of course, your face was like, what do you mean, Jerry Maguire? Of course I've seen Jerry Maguire. There's a part in Jerry Maguire where, you know, if, if you guys haven't seen it, it's like Tom Cruise as an agent. He loses all his business. He has to go independent. And then he has one person left. And he calls him like, Jerry, if you want my business, he's like, you gotta say, show me the money. And what does he say? He's like, here, he's like, sit down first, show me the money. So my brother and I started our own business. We built our company into, oh, wait, no, that's not what we're saying yet. Yeah, we're gonna go over five tools, show you how to build your business. At the end, we're gonna show you guys how you guys can work with us, how we created the world's very first AI certified agent. You guys can work with us on that as well. Just a little bit about us. You know, my brother and I, we started our own business. We built it into 13 countries in all 50 states in less than two years, all using organic branding strategies. I don't think we, we ran like what, one ad, Mike? One, maybe two ads during that time. Grew it into 13 countries because of our organic branding strategies. And I'll tell you what, there was a time, actually, we lived in Orlando for two years, so it's, it's good coming back here. Lived in Orlando for two years, and we had a seven-bedroom content house over in Lake Nona. And it was amazing, because it was myself, my brother, and we had a full-time cameraman on staff. And then the rest of the house was just a giant video studio. So it was, set, it was three young bachelor dudes living in one house, and the rest of the thing was just a giant video studio. We had clients fly from all over the country to come in here, shoot content with us, learn our branding strategies. They, we had a full t copywriting staff, a full graphic designer staff, full video staff, full people to help you with your brand. And then me and my brother to help you specialize. Who is your ideal client profile? Who are we shooting videos for? 
And then, you know, artificial intelligence came out. And I'm like, holy shit, if we don't adapt, we are going to die. Period. Because a lot of the things that we're doing can now be done by AI. If you train it the right way, it can now be done by AI. So we're like, you know what? I don't want to be forced out of the business or forced to learn AI. So we made the decision. We got an entire research and development team to help us start learning AI, to help us start getting ahead. From there, we put thousands of hours into it, reduced our staff by over 50%. And now we launched the Krim Institute of Artificial Intelligence. Ah, there we go. We launched the Krim Institute of Artificial Intelligence after thousands of hours putting into it. Got featured in US Times, Business Sharks, College Stars, you guys can read the rest, but for pioneering the future of real estate. Guys, who this is for? The people want to be a part of the future because I'll tell you what, we have a saying around like or, or within our groups, there's going to be a last agent standing. It's going to be a last agent standing. It's going to be the one who uses AI. AI will not replace you, but an agent who does will. Look, guys, it is a people business, right? Everyone always says like, oh, real estate can never be replaced by computers. And you're right. But somebody who uses AI will replace you. <laughs> How many people here have seen more ads for AI more than anything else in their life before? I'm seeing ads, products, services all up and up. And it's like all of these things sound cool, but they can't all be the greatest things since sliced bread. And even right now, it's a race. It's a race to use AI. It's a race for these companies coming out with all these different things. So unfortunately, when it's a race and there's speed involved, it's not always the best product at the end of the line. So just because an AI tool comes out doesn't mean it's always the best thing. So there's a shiny object syndrome. It all looks great. It sounds great. This tool has promised to change my life, but will it? And also, what we'd like to talk about, hole, she keeps falling and falling and falling. That's what AI can do. Has anybody here ever spent time on something? You spend all night thinking it's the best idea ever, and then you look up, it's 4 a.m., and then you wake up the next morning, you're like, this sucks. Like, what was I thinking doing this for this long? And in our mind, during that whole time, we thought it was the greatest thing ever. Guys, there's a rabbit hole when it comes to AI, because it's really cool once you start playing with it. There's a lot of things that I see some people nodding, like, yeah, I've been there. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with it. But I don't know about you, but wasting time, energy, and effort is not on my to-do list. So trying to figure this out can be really difficult. Here's what we're gonna cover, guys. First, we're gonna go over the history of AI, because I believe it's really important to understand our history to see just how big of an impact this is gonna have. Next, the AI real estate revolution. It's not coming, guys. It's already here. And then we're gonna go over AI tools. We're gonna go over five specific tools, and we're gonna have some pro tips in there too to be able to help you guys earn more business. Ah, see, I, I didn't say it there, but I kind of did say it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, so what is it? I mean, it's computer learning, reading. It's just a bunch of information in one area, and there's a computer that can read it really fast. This was something, I had to look at this, like, I swear, like, 10 or 20 times. Look it up different times, different places. It's been around for 70 years, guys. I was waiting for some, whoa, no. It's been around for 70 years, 7-0. Yeah, my girl. See, we're going to get along just fine. Yeah, 70 years, but really think about that. I mean, dude, I've seen more Terminator memes like in the last couple months than I've ever seen before. Like, John Connor's coming. The Terminator's here, right? Because like, they're saying AI is going to take over the world. But guys, the people power have already had it for 70 years. If it was going to take over the world, it would have already done it by now. All right, let's, let's, let's do some quick polls here. Who here has used Am or Alexa or Siri? Yeah, come on, all the hands, right? Artificial intelligence. Who here has used Google Maps? All right. Who here has that red squiggly line pop up on their computer on the daily because you misspell a word? Right? We're in real estate. We all type real fast, right? <laughs> and here's, here's one of my favorite ones. Who here has a rumba? You know, I see somebody like, I cannot live without my rumba, right? Imagine if they would have marketed it like this 10 years ago. Get your artificial intelligence robot that will clean your house for you while you're not there. People would have been freaking out. Like, what do you mean I can have an artificial intelligence robot in my house? They'd be freaking out, but they marketed it. Get a Rumba. You don't have to clean. The robot will for you. And people bought that up. The, here's the, the reason I'm saying this. Artificial intelligence is already integrated into all of our lives. Add, or how big will it really affect our lives or real estate? It's ridiculous. Most of us can't even, can't even uh, function. Without some of the tools, there, there's so much more that's already integrated. Without just some of the tools that are up here. And then the progression of technology. The internet, right? When the internet, look, I wasn't in real estate when the internet came out. I think some of you guys may have guessed that. But I was around for it. 
But the internet, when that came out, the dot-com era hit. The agents who got ahead of that, man, they started dominating the industry. And then came social media. And man, social media, what did they say? It's for kids, it's not for business. Now look what it is. Every agent in this room knows a terrible agent, but dang it, they're good on social media, so they get business. Don't start naming names. That happened at an event and that agent was in the room and I'm like, man, fights almost start breaking out. But that's a reality, right? We all know an agent who is just a terrible agent. You've done, a, you've done a deal with them and you're like, how are you in this business? But then you go to their social media, they get like thousands of views, likes and all that things, right? And now is AI. And here's what I want to tell you guys. AI is going to be more like the internet than it is like social media. And here's why. Imagine walking into one of your appointments and you look at one of your clients and you say, hey, you know that internet thing? Yeah, I don't use that. They look at you like you're crazy. Like, what do you mean you don't use the internet? Heck, I bet you can't, well, you can't even be in this business without the internet, right? Social media, on the other hand, you can get by without being on social media, right? You can still be a pretty damn good agent, not to your full potential, but that's not what we're here to talk about right now, without social media. AI is gonna be more like the internet. Because guys, here's the reality. AI works 125,000 times faster than the human brain. So here's what I imagine in the first, in the next couple of years. Imagine you walking into a home and you're saying, hey, you know that tool that works 125,000 times faster than the human brain? Oh, I don't use that. They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. I get it right now, it's a little new, it's confusing, we don't really know what it is. But that will, that in the near future, if you don't use AI, you'll be out of this business. Again, guys, you have to decide where you're gonna learn AI from. You do. You can decide to get ahead of it now. This whole presentation is about decisions. Because I don't know about you guys, I've been to a lot of different events. A lot of different events. And I can't tell you how many times I left there so excited to go implement this strategy. And then two weeks later, I'm back to doing the same damn thing I was before. And it happens to most of us. But this AI thing, it's not gonna go away. It's not one presentation you're gonna hear. It's gonna keep coming at you. And you have to decide to learn it now or be forced to do it later. And I don't know about you, I only being forced to do anything. This is just a little bit about progression, right? Internet, SEO, social media, and now it's artificial intelligence. And this is just, just you know, a great reality check. Guys, this is a once in a generation opportunity. The only thing that was as big as AI, as much of it's gonna affect the business, was the internet 20 years ago. This is not some shiny object that's popping up. This is a once in a generation opportunity. There will be people who ask you, hey, during the AI real estate revolution, what were you doing? And I'm telling you right now, this presentation is gonna be a blessing and a curse for you. A blessing, because if you leave here and you make the decision to take over, this is an operation takeover, to absolutely just take over your marketplaces, Man, you're gonna say, I fucking dominated the AI real estate revolution. My business went to the next steps during the AI revolution. Or you're not gonna be able to say, oh, I didn't really know that was happening because you were here. Oh, I didn't really know how big of an impact that was gonna have because you were here. I'm opening your eyes and here's the reality. We are in the middle of it right now and you have to make a decision. <laughs> I love throwing this up here. Guys, these are real headlines on newspapers that were coming out when the internet first came out. Internet, bah, millions going away. They're giving up on it, right? Afraid of computers. Here are my favorite ones over here on this side. Hackers can turn your home computer into a bomb and blow your family into smithereens. Like, look, we look at these now and we laugh, right? But this was like a real fear. Here's another one. Computer virus spreads to humans. Maybe I should take the virus out, it's still a soft subject. But uh, computer virus spreads to humans. Guys, these are things that people were really fearful of. And millions of people were giving up on the internet. And heck, terrorists are gonna blow up the internet. Like, I don't even know how that's possible. But again, guys, when people are fearful, when they don't know what it's really about, they get confused, and what happens? They get scared. Does it sound familiar? Same headlines coming out. What do we got? I should've threw Terminator one up. I mean, I feel like that's just so overused and overplayed now. I've seen so many Terminator memes. Will artificial intelligence take over the world? Attack of the psycho chat, <laughs> psycho chat bot, which there might be psycho chat bots out there. Killer computers. Guys, it's history repeating itself. That's what's happening right now. History is repeating itself. Probably heard that a lot throughout our life, right? History repeats itself. So here we go, guys. The internet happened. Most people ran scared. A select few stood up, was an innovator, and took it to the next level. AI is here. Most people running scared. Most people saying it's not going to do anything. There's a select few who are going to take it to the next level. 
Here's a great example of just how big of an impact this is having, guys. We all know that one on the left, right? Everybody knows Google. We don't even say we're going to internet search something or search it. We're going to Google it. Whether you even go to Google or not, you just say, I'm going I'm, I'm to Google this. I was saying on my team, when somebody asked me a dumbass question, I say GTS. Anybody know what that means? Google that shit. Yeah. yeah you call me with the dumb question. I'm like, GTS. Don't call me with that, right? We tell them to Google it. Not too many people know this one over here. This is Microsoft Edge. And for, I see some people like I tell people GTS all the time. But here's the reality. Google, Microsoft Edge. Here's the reality. If you guys didn't know this, ChatGPT majority shareholder is Microsoft, right? So they basically own it. More and more people every single day are going to ChatGPT to get information over Google. ChatGPT is the fastest growing app in history by far, and it is not even close. Not even close. So what does that mean? Guys, Google is being dethroned right in front of our eyes. I'll say that again. Google is being dethroned right in front of our eyes. Some people might say, but Nick, Google has Bard. How many of you have ever even heard of Bard before? A good amount. But here's the reality. Will Lyft over, ever overtake Uber? No. Because Lyft was first, first to market, and they're the ones everybody knows. You're getting the Lyft. I mean, Uber. Uber was first to market. Right, right, right. Sorry, guys. Some people give me a weird look. I knew I messed it up. Uber was first to market. Lyft won't overtake Uber, right? Uber was first to market. They're the first ones here. Google Bard, it's probably just as good. But I'll tell you what, ChatGPT is simple to use, and it's the first one everybody's using. Here's the reality, guys. ChatGPT is going to put Google not it on the block. So what does this mean for real estate? Guys, the biggest team in your marketplace isn't too big to be overthrown. If Google isn't too big to be dethroned, neither is the biggest team in your marketplace. Because here's the reality. A solo agent who knows how to use AI can now drastically outmarket the biggest team in your area. Period. Not even a question. How were they the biggest teams before? They had a graphics team. They had a social media division. They had a video team. They had marketing teams. They could just outspend you, outmarket you, and out then outproduce you. Now the tides are changing. The reality is a solo agent can now outmarket the biggest team in the area. We always say where attention goes, money flows. So there's a shift that is happening before people's eyes. Google's being dethroned. There are going to be teens being dethroned left and right. Especially just think about it right now, guys. How's the marketplace in Orlando right now? Inventory levels. How are you guys doing? Mm, I see some people like, uh, not too bad. But here's the reality. As the market shrinks, what do most people do with it? It's a question. Shrink, right? What is the first thing most people try and cut? Marketing, what they're doing out there. This is the perfect, I could not imagine a better time for AI to come out. Because as most people are shrinking, as the market's shrinking, as most people are shrinking their marketing, their leads, with AI, you can spend drastically less money and produce more. And put out more content, more information, more branding, more marketing, more lead gen. This is the absolute time to dominate. We always say, I don't compete, I freaking dominate. And this is exactly what AI is going to allow you to do. All right, let's get into the AI real estate revolution. Guys, it's not coming. It's already here. Whether you like it or not, I mean, I love it. Because we made this decision. We said we're taking over. We're not staying the same. But guys, it's not about you. It's about the homeowner. Let me explain that a little bit. It's when the homeowner gets comfortable with it which is already happening faster than some of you may like, then they're gonna start demanding that you use it. And once that happens, it's already too late. I thought something that, <laughs> something that I really saw as like a tipping point in this AI real estate revolution. I was just watching, you know, I was watching, what was I watching the other day? Parks and Rec, has anybody ever watched that? Oh, hell yeah, you're right, it's a funny show. So I was watching the show, right, Leslie Nope. Woo. But um, so it was on this show, and then like a commercial popped up. I need to upgrade so I don't get commercial, but a commercial popped up, right? And it was a commercial for, I forget what car company it was. It was a high-end car company. The very first thing they said in their commercial was they're using artificial intelligence in their car now, blatantly out front. The whole commercial was about them using artificial intelligence in their car. And why is that such a big deal? Because before that, the only time I saw artificial intelligence and people talking about it were ads that business owners were running to me and to other business owners. It was kind of like, all right, let's use it for business. Nobody's really going out there, even though we created the world's first AI certified agent. Most companies are going out there and promoting artificial intelligence. This car company starts saying, artificial intelligence, this is what we're using. This is why you should get our car. And I'm like, this is it. It's happening right now. 
once I saw that one, I started seeing a couple more after that too. More and more companies are starting to use this. So why does that matter? Because they're starting to just get people comfortable with what artificial intelligence is. Oh yeah, I see it on TV all the time now. Even if they have no idea what it is, it's okay. They saw it on a commercial. That's how some people's brains work, right? Once they see it on the news, then they all believe it. But here it is, guys. When the homeowner gets comfortable with it and demands it from you, guess what? You're going to be a have or a have not, period. You're either going to have it and know how to use it, or you're going to have to lie your ass off. Or you're just going to have to tell them no and walk out the door without a contract. Guys, AI will not replace you, but an agent using it will. We're going to start some ads. We're going to start running some ads, some like memes and stuff. The last agent standing, right? Like Survivor. So that's what it's going to turn into. Everybody wants to be this one. I love this graph. Because I ask most people, like, yeah, I'm an innovator. <laughs> but look, like, the reality is this. Not everybody is an innovator. Period. You, you can't be. It's a graph, right? 2.5%. We're already almost past the innovator stage and going into the early adopter stage. <laughs> I mean, this is just the reality, guys. When do you want to get involved? You already missed this one. Just about to miss this one. We're getting into this here. Where do you want to decide to get involved in this? Like I said, it all comes down to decisions. Some people will leave here and you'll be the same freaking agent you were when you walked in. Just the reality. You might leave here a little motivated and then give it a week. Sorry, like, it's the reality, right? Guys, just a quick note on events. Everybody, like, if I ask agents, how many, how many agents here have spare time? Right, right, we all laugh. What does everybody do when we leave events? We create a huge list of things that we're going to do. If you already had no time, why would you create a list of all these things you're going to do extra? Best thing you can do when you leave an event, make a stop doing list. Make a stop doing list. Because if you're going to start doing other things, you got to stop doing some other things, right? Just, that's just a little quick note about events. But here we go, guys. This is just like, you have to make a decision. When do you want to get involved? Like I said, this would be your biggest blessing or your biggest curse. Because I'm telling you, you can still get involved early. Leaving here, you can still get involved early and start dominating the marketplace. Or you can wait. So you're forced to get into this. I think this graph is even more whew, powerful. We're already past this. Point of panic. I should throw like Terminator memes all over that one. Point of panic, Terminator memes, world's ending, right? AI is here, guys. It's over. It's done. All the jobs are gone. That's kind of like the narrative that was going on. This is more so like the, the consumer mindset, time and public concern. Generative AI, we got to move it past the height of hysteria. Once I saw the commercial, I'm like, nope, we're past it now. Once we get to here, and it's coming, guys, this right here is when the homeowner will demand it. It'll be just like the internet. And guess what? It's going to happen faster because the internet's already here. They already have something to kind of compare it to. Oh, yeah, it's just like the internet. It's not that big of a deal. It's not ending the world. Guys, these are the graphs you have to be concerned to take over. And by this point, are you going to let the, are you gonna let the market dictate when you learn it? All right, who's ready to learn some tools? Let's get it. All right, guys, warning, 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 warning. This could be the greatest, e this could be the greatest liability of your time, energy, production, effort. Because if you don't follow what we're going to tell you, it can be really hard to learn this stuff. All right, let me ask somebody here in the crowd. Let me ask my man right here. You ready for it? In the black. All right, if you ask ChatGPT a dumbass question, what kind of answer do you think you're going to get? Bad answer. I, I knew you know it. Guys, you get a dumbass answer. I know in, in middle school, grade school, your teacher told you there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, newsflash, there is. And especially with AI, it's not like just because you ask it a question, do not mistake speed for quality. Because it go, Bruh. I wish it had sound effects. I really did. That'd be a lot cool. It doesn't make that sound. I wish it did. But it's going to, like, you ask it a question, go, Bruh, and it'll give you this answer, and it'll be long. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this is the best thing ever. Guys, don't mistake speed for quality. Right? If you guys are taking notes, here's a great one. AI is not a toy, it's a tool. It's a tool, guys. It is an amazing tool for your business. What is it? Garbage in, garbage out. All right, you guys can take a screenshot of this, or you can message Aaron, or Aaron will be able to send it to you after because I'm going to be sharing it with Aaron, wherever you are. These tools up here, these are the tools that we went through. And guys, I'll tell you what, like we said, there's a lot of speed involved in AI. With speed, doesn't always come the best quality. I'll get out of the way. With speed, always doesn't come the best quality. I'm not going to go through each one of these. I'm going to go through a specific few. But these are the ones that we tested out. We tried out. They actually work. We talked to their uh, teams. All that, all that good job. 
we kind of went through and told you guys different ways you can use it. Has anyone did try it on that AI? No, it's the one that gives you like digital headshots, like AI headshots. Pretty cool. That's actually the one I use. I got to get a new one. I got cut my hair recently all off. So got to get a new one there. All right, you guys ready? You guys good? All right, chat GPT. Who here has used chat GPT? All right, let's go. Good room. That's why y'all are here. You're like, I want to know more, more. All right, so I'm going to go over some simple things with chat GPT. I just like some simple things that everybody should like needs to know about it. The first is we all have to individually train our chat GPT to do the things we want it to do. We all have to individually train it to do the things we want it to do. Just because mine is trained to do things doesn't mean yours is. And every time you open up a new chat, you have to retrain it to do the simple tasks that you want it to do. Every new chat is a clean slate. How am I on time, Aaron? You're good, but can you say that six more times? Because I think they probably need to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, how much time am I at? I just want to get a good reference. Uh, you got like 12. 12 minutes? Hmm. Maybe 15 minutes. All right. I got to move. All right, here we go, guys. Get out a lot of shit for you. Guys, so Chad GPT, you all have to individually train it to do the things you want it to do. Here we go, guys. Pro tip. All right, let's try that again. Pro tip. I didn't hear anybody up front. One more time, guys. Pro tip. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So uh, listing descriptions. I know it's like a hot topic, right? I, you just see I'm going to speed up right now. Listing descriptions is a hot topic, right? Everybody's writing their listing descriptions. Here's the reality of how Chad GPT works, all right? Just because you give it the specs and tell it, write me a listing description for this. It can go to the internet and pull the worst freaking listing description from Montana and write your listing description based off of that. It doesn't know what a good listing description is. Heck, Florida for you. It can go to Montana and a podunk town with a tiny shack and use that for your listing description and write it based off of that. You guys following with me? Because it doesn't know what a good listing description is. So here's what you have to do first. You have to tell it, today I'm going to train you how to write a listing description. I'm going to give you three examples of amazing listing descriptions. Don't respond, just acknowledge. Learn. All right? So you want to tell it, I'm going to train you. I'm going to give you three examples of amazing listing descriptions. Don't respond, just read and learn. All right? And then what do you do? You find the best three, the three best damn listing descriptions in your area. If they're not yours, put your ego aside. You know the agent who writes the best ones, right? But find the three best listing descriptions in your area and then insert them into ChatGPT. And now that chat is forever trained what a good listing description is. It knows what a good listing description is. If you want an even bigger pro tip, how do you don't say it this time? Ah, you know what you say, yeah. Here's the thing. If you guys only work, well, not waterfront properties here. I guess you can in Orlando, right? Some lakefront. Okay. If you guys want waterfront properties, you can open up a new chat and then train it just for waterfront properties. So take three listing descriptions from waterfront properties. Boom, that, tra that chat is trained for waterfront properties. Then take another one for this city, like specific areas. Boom, so you could train different chats how to write listing descriptions for the different areas. If you don't train it, it will just pick up a random listing description from a random area. It's all about how you train it. And then here's another one. After you write the listing description, then say, write me a five email keyword sequence. Five email sequence inviting buyers and agents to an open house and blast that shit out to every buyer and you have in your database and every agent in the MLS. Why not? All right. So that's one part of it. Second part, pro tip. Let's go. If you're going to create content with this, do not just go in there and say, run me a Facebook post for a buyer. Ha <laughs> ha, it's so fast. Look how good it is. It's shit. It doesn't work and it won't work for you. Simple rule of marketing. People are sold on emotion and justify with logic, right? That's that gut feeling. Has anybody here ever lost a deal or won a deal because they just felt like you were the right person for the job? That's that gut feeling. People are sold on emotion and justify with logic. So your content has to speak to them emotionally. What I'm going to tell you guys today is how to create content, train your AI to speak to your end user emotionally. First step of this, identify who your target audience is. And I mean, get specific. The riches are in the niches. Don't just say a buyer. Don't just say first time home buyer. Say millennial first time home buyer looking for a home in Ocala. Yes, it picks up on the market service area. I see some people took their phone out, like I can't keep up with this shit now. Yeah, guys, get specific with your niche audience. The more specific you are, the better. 
Because if you are the only one creating content consistently for this target audience, you're going to win that target audience every time. What do most agents do? Most agents are just happy if they get a post up for the day, right? Like, man, if they post every day, they feel like they're winning. No, 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 no. What you want to do is only create three target audience through your chat GPT. And then here's what you want to do. What are the goals? What are the fears? What are the motivations? What are the goals of a first, first time millennial home buyer looking for a home in Ocala? What are the fears of a first time millennial home buyer looking for a home in Ocala? What are the motivations of a first time home buyer looking for a blah, blah, blah? What did you just do? You created an ideal client profile. You now know the goals, fears, and motivations of exactly who you're looking to market to. Now you can, now you go back in that chat and ask it, hey, now write me four Facebook posts. Why? Because it knows the goals, the fears, the motivations. Now write me a 10 email sequence. One of the hardest things to do in marketing is to be super consistent with who you're marketing to. Most people just tell you to be consistent in your marketing because they just want you to do something. I, don't, I, I used to do that because it was too hard to tell you how to do it every single time. As an individual, sit there and be creative and think goals, fears, motivations. Now you have AI that can do it for you. There's zero excuse once you learn how to do this and train it that you should not be taking the frick over, guys. I'm trying to cut, cut, school it down on that. Goals, fears, motivations, ideal client profile, you do that, you can dominate using this. Next one, 11 labs. Woo! This one can recreate your voice. Hoo-hoo. You can literally duplicate yourself. Recreate your voice. You can use this in reels. You can use this in listing video voiceovers. You can do it in market updates. Instead of posting a market update that's this long, you can put it into 11 labs and have your voice read it. Imagine having a podcast without ever even saying a word. 11 labs. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I got some more to get to. Synthesia, another great one. Synthesia, create an avatar. Do not create one of yourself yet. There's another tool that it's not ready yet that we're actually talking with the owner that'll be coming out soon. That is gangster. But this one, you can use an AI avatar as an assistant. Put it in there. The AI avatar reads the video for you. Great way to add rocket fuel to the videos and everything that you are doing. Super simple to use. Time, Aaron? What am I? Five, ten? Don't tell me two. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Pro tip. All right, Microsoft Designer. It creates unique images for you at a click of a button. You just tell it exactly what you're looking for. Boom. You can insert a picture and then just tell it to write on top of it. And it gives you 15 different ways you can do it. Here is where getting creative helps, right? So you can get, combine it, two of these. Hmm. Yeah. So if you, let's say you get a house listed under contract within 48 hours, right? What do you want to do? You want to tell everybody, right? Like, it's a win. What do most people do? They might make one post about it. I'm like, yeah, you're a loser. One post. Pfft. Now with ChatGPT and Microsoft Designer, here's what you can do. Say you get a home listed within 48 hours. Take that listing description that you wrote for it. Go back into ChatGPT and say, hey, write me a post. I got this listing under 48 hours. Answer the listing description. It writes it for you. Now write me four more. So it writes you four posts under 48 hours. You go into Microsoft Designer. And you can create 15 images of the same house, marketed and looking a different way, under 48 hours under contract. You know what I do? I post that four different times, five different times. I don't take just one win and post it. Guys, post the shit out of your wins. And then what do I do? I write an email about it. And you know who that goes to? All the for sale by owners. Right? Hey, look at this, a home under 48 hour contract. I send that email out 10 different times. This is where getting creative really comes into it. Taking the same thing and asking it to do it, get it done five different ways. And now with these tools, you can do it. Chad GBT and this one right here costs you about 45 bucks a month. Maybe $45 a month. And you have an entire graphics division, division, an entire copy division, right? Unlimited emails, unlimited ads, unlimited posts. You see how people are starting to take over. Oh, all right. Here, hold on, hold on. Come on. Work with me, girl. All right, here we go. Who here creates reels or wants to create reels? Opus.pro will change your life. You can take a, f yeah, dot pro, not slash pro. You can take a 40 minute video, put it into Opus within minutes. It chops it up into the highly engaging points. It puts subtitles on your video. It writes a description for it. What's up? Yeah, right. 
Oh, yeah, we just, yeah, yeah. And on top of, he said, this is going to get put on Opus. And on top of that, too, it gives you an engagement score. Even tells you how well it's going to do. So in minutes, you can take a 40-minute video that you shot two years ago. I always told people the videos you shoot will be an asset. Take all the videos you've shot in the past, put them into Opus. It chops it up for you, puts, out, puts on subtitles, engaging subtitles, emojis. Gives you a written description. Gives you notes on what you could do to make it better. But wait, there's more. Billy Mays, anybody? And then it gives you an engagement score for about $10, $20 a month. Unlimited reels. You used to have to pay our company thousands to do this because I had a copywriter, a graphics, and video editor, all of these things. And here's the skinny of it. There are still some companies using this tool charging you thousands. That's the unfortunate part. But now you know. Here are the decisions we all have to make. Create or watch. Will you create massive amounts of content, create massive amounts of marketing, create massive amounts of branding, create massive amounts of ads, or watch people do it? AI real estate revolution, it's here, guys. Will you create or watch? Or I like to say, creator or a hater? Which one are you going to be? Differentiate or die. How will you differentiate yourself using this? Has anybody here ever walked into an appointment that said, what makes you different than everybody else? Well, how are you going to differentiate yourself? Asset or liability? Are these tools you're going to use going to be an asset for you? My favorite one, take over or stay the same. Guys, this is, the, this is the decision each one of you has to make walking out of here. Will I make the decision to absolutely fucking take over my marketplace and everything that I'm doing, or will you stay the same and hope it doesn't come? Take over or stay the same, these are the decisions that we have to make. Guys, option one, do it yourself. Take these tools, take the recording, we have everything here for you, or option two, we can do it together. So you guys can take the tools, we just went over that. Risk to doing it yourself, there's a lot of side effects, including going down the rabbit hole, waste of time, energy, and effort. You guys already have a full-time job, dis disappointing outcomes. And let's face it, this isn't what you guys did. Did anybody come into real estate to learn AI? No, then stay in the seat of being a real estate agent and let us take care of the rest. Human constraints, trial and error, trying to figure it out yourself. Emotional tug of war, excitement and anxiety. Who here is excited for AI? Who here has anxiety because of AI? Emotional tug of war, it's back and forth. It's like, I want to learn this, but how the heck do I do it? Hope and fear. Hope that's going to take over, like, take over my business, do everything for me. Fear that it might take over my business or somebody else will. And the full potential success versus the worst worry of failure. Complete and proven strategy for this. Guys, this is why we created the world's very first AI certified agent. We've been published on Fox, USA Today, Google News, American Business Stars, Future Millionaires, Benzinga, and many other places. Oh, that's this supposed to look better than that that's pdf for microsoft Word. anyways guys the first ever ai certified agent last 10 months we spent thousands of hours on this my team has spent thousands of hours on this and we've already had a marketing company that grew into 13 countries and you guys get the exact strategies that we've been doing we've certified over 300 agents in four countries in the last three months we know what works and what doesn't work you guys can become when's the last time you got to say you're one of the world's first this is what we're giving you the opportunity to do Here's how it works, five-day AI certification class, extensive group, group questions. So if you guys have questions, we are there for you live on a Zoom. One-on-one -on -one personal chat, email, phone, and Zoom support. Guys, we're not just gonna show you how to run your entire marketing division, your leads, marketing, ads. We're also gonna show you how to close deals using AI, using the AI listing advantage. Imagine walking into a house and saying, how would you like to be the first AI listing in the area? really turn some eyes over 200 custom prompts ai lead gen coaching session on day four ai certification guys it's all about what makes you different that's what everything is about differentiation my man aaron front row guys built in differentiation you're one of the first in the world to be ai certified and we teach you how to use it from zero to certified in less than a week total value we can mark this up as high as we want guys it's the first in the world today just 997 what we hear all the time, it's too complicated. Guys, we're here for you five days. We have a live support team. You guys have lifetime support in a private group too. You guys get to join our private group, the AI influencers, and you guys have lifetime support from me and my admin. I don't have time to learn AI. That's why our program is made simple. I send a lot of my programs to my grandma because if she can't do it, I don't give it out to you guys. True story. AI is impersonal and harms a human connection. When you don't train it, it is impersonal and it's bad. If you don't train it right, it will not work the way you want it to. Implementing AI is too expensive. That's why this one time, one take Timmy. Go with this once, we'll get you the rest of your life. I fear AI will replace human jobs. It will. The agent who uses it will. Yep, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Before or after, let me get to the end.
Step one, enroll. Step two, attend the five days. Apply your knowledge and what you do. Put your certification to use immediately and stay connected with it. You also get a free book, my, my book, The Timeline Takeover, how to take over timelines and the mindset that you need to do it. You got an AI certified agent t-shirt. I know that's a kicker for all y'all. Like, damn it, I get a t-shirt, I'm in. AI certified agent t-shirt. And you guys get lifetime access to our AI certified agent community. We also get published on major platforms that you get to use in your business. You have Fox News, MarketWatch, Benzinga, and many other places sharing information on why people do work with the AI certified agent. It's just $9.97 one time. And if you go to a certifiedagent.ai, you can get this full one hour training and $100 off for the next two weeks. So guys, take a picture of this, you get the full one hour training, plus you guys get $100 off for the next two weeks. Here's what I wanna leave you guys with. This is all about decisions. Create or watch, make a decision guys, because you're, you're doing one or the other. You're either creating enough content, creating enough exposure, you're watching somebody else's. And take over or stay the same. That was my goal for you guys. I don't want anybody out walking out here being the same damn person they were when they walked in. The AI real estate revolution, it's happening, it's here, and you have an opportunity to lead it. Thank you guys, thank you Aaron, let's go. All right, so we are not done yet, as you guys know, but give it up one more time for Nick Krim for bringing the energy, bringing the goods. Sorry to make you race through that, but we've got a few people that are gonna talk a little bit about, how many of you guys like the part where he was actually sharing a whole bunch of tools and tricks that you might not have heard of. How many of you picked up at least one you didn't know, make some noise or raise your hand? So that's kind of, not only is that part of the goal, but the goal of this next section is really to give you a couple more. Would y'all be excited to get a few more if you are say yeah? So long story short, I decided that not only will we let Nick come light the stage up, but we put a few of the top agents in the community that are super savvy and good with technology and have been already playing with AI to basically just run you through a five, six minute overview of some of the ways they're using it that you might not know about. Are y'all cool with that? So that's literally the question I'm going to ask each of them. And we may let them dive a little bit deeper, but transparently, I'm just going to ask them to run through three, four, five things that they're doing to use AI or automation, because I figure why not talk about both at the same time. Uh, AI or automation in their real estate business, exactly from the horse's mouth of people that are crushing it in the trenches. So I'm going to bring them up right now and we will start with mr jeffrey funk who's you know i'm going to read their bios quickly because you guys all know who they are or you wouldn't have come to hear them talk and i want them to be able to talk more so jeffrey funk runs a real estate team he's got over 150 agents on the team that sold 360 million dollars and 719 transactions in 2022 he's been a top producer in the area for over 25 years and he not only is using all this stuff and his wife is using all this stuff, but they are leading a team of people to use all the stuff. So I figure who better to learn from than Mr. Jeffrey Funk with the Funk Collection at EXP Realty. Let's give him a round of applause. You can grab that one right there. And then Anne Marie. Anne Marie and her husband are like super, super, super tech savvy, and they have all sorts of uh, automation. So we're going to try to avoid getting into the nitty gritty too much because we could do an entire session on some of her expertise uh but long story short she's been in the top 500 for since for many 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 years she's been in it for every year that we've ever ranked her but the cool thing about her is that she really is focused on spending more time with her daughter she has a daughter that's had some health complications and she doesn't want to have a complicated life where she's having to answer her phone at weird hours or not put her family first so she has an, become an expert at efficiency and automation and AI simply to buy back her time and to give an extra 10 or 15 hours per week that she used to spend in real estate with her family and with her daughter. So let's give it up for Anne-Marie Wurzel with Mainframe. And then last but certainly not least, Miranda Cady with Cadence Lifestyle Real Estate. She's got a whole bunch of AI systems that she's been using. She's a top producing agent. She hit our M Club last year, which means that she averaged a million dollar plus transaction, I believe the last two years, which is pretty amazing. And let's give her a round of applause. I'm just gonna let them talk instead of reading their full bios. Sorry, y'all, but you guys already respect them or you wouldn't have shown up. So let's dive straight in. Miranda, I'll let you go first. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Wow, what talk about how, Talk about how you're currently using AI and yeah. give them at least three or four strategies or systems or tools that you're using. 
Absolutely. So in the luxury real estate space, there's a lot of um, issue with photography licensure, right? Unless you have uh, rights to the photography, you cannot be using it on your platform. Some people like to just click on Google, download that image, and repost it somewhere without uh, the authority to do so. So when we were designing uh, CadenceLifestyle.com, the first luxury boutique brokerage uh, powered by LPT Realty, it's a whole new venture that we're pioneering. Um, we utilized mid-journey specifically for every photograph on that luxury site. So I do recommend pulling it up on a laptop later today versus your iPhone because we're still working on mobile and we haven't launched it publicly. But every single property photo on the website is uh, digitally manufactured by AI. So one thing I might recommend to all of you guys, Nick did a great job explaining how necessary this is in our industry. If you don't feel comfortable or confident with it, who raise your hand if you have a teenager. Okay, right? Or if you know a teenager, you have a neighbor. Uh, you can always outsource this to someone else. You can hire someone else to do this. I'm not a computer coder. I cannot run mid-journey, but I can hire someone to do that. So if it's not a skill set that you're adept to, don't be afraid to ask for resources and assistance in uh, getting this done for your business. I can keep going, Aaron, but... Love it. No, let's keep going. And Marie, actually, yeah, let's let's keep going down the road. Lifestyle.com. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Tell, give us a few strategies and tools that you're using. The left, left button until it turns green. I don't know. Now you're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, so he gave a little bit of a tidbit about my my history and honestly I just want to if you don't know me I'll, I'll share a little bit um, our daughter had a stroke when she was one and so my goal is to gain time back into my life so chat GPT has become my marketing department it's writing my social media posts it's come up with 60 ideas later today I'm gonna be batching some Instagram content in front of video you know for video and I had 13 ideas you know this month because we moved and it, it was a big month and I didn't have a lot of ideas, so I said, you know, ChatGPT, I need your help. And it came up with 60. I don't love all 60 of them, but I'm probably going to do like 15 of them. Another thing that I've done with um, ChatGPT. Can you give us an idea of what yeah. I, what you mean when you say ideas? Like, get like ideas for going on uh, Instagram Reels. You know, what am I going to talk about? What do people want to know about? Can I give some real estate tips? Can I talk about some funny things, you know, that happen in real estate that people don't always know about? Um, and, and just being real and sharing that stuff and just going on camera. But coming up with ideas is half the battle. And, you know, I used to work in advertising agencies, so I have a creative background. But I can't just come up with ideas constantly. It came up with 60 in 10 seconds. So I can't compete with that in my brain. What and prompt do you feed it? Sorry. Uh, to get that. I mean, you're a top producing real estate agent. Talk about specific um, struggles that a first time home buyer might see if they are um, going to an inspection and how to overcome those things. And it just kind of like gets you to think like, what are some of the stories that I could share over the last 18 years that I've done this, you know? So that would be an example. Um, it's helping to write property descriptions, of course, if you're not using it for that, you know, you definitely should. And um, just another kind of funny tip, like if you're in a contentious negotiation with somebody, and you're very emotional, you should definitely have ChatGPT um, tailor your thoughts and say, you know, this is her email, and I don't like her, and this is what I want to write back. And please edit my thoughts so that I can sound more professional, because if you are going to put something in writing, you want to make sure that it's good and that you're not going to get in trouble. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you want me to talk about automation, I can do that later, but... I have yeah, let's let's go to Jeff, and then okay. we'll come back to you on automation. Right, well, Aaron uh, this morning asked me for a bio, and I was like, oh, I don't have a bio. So ChatGPT wrote my bio for Aaron this morning. <laughs> <laughs> now for better about not reading the whole thing. It was no, really quick. <laughs> um, I have I, – I love the AI. I love tech. I've been um, – you know, we started a website, realtyinorlando.com, in 2007, and – what I've, I've always seen it evolve, things evolve. There's been a lot of black hat SEO through through time. There, there's quick fixes out there. And I always caution everybody for the quick fix. Is ChatGPT, is it an awesome tool? Absolutely. But 
if the only tool you have in your toolbox is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? So I ask everybody, use ChatGPT, get the ideas like you're getting ideas, then craft them as your own. You know, don't, it's really easy to go into ChatGPT and say, hey, I want five blog posts on, uh, for new home buyers in the Orlando area. It'll spit it out to you. It'll spit it out really fast. You can post it. Does Google know that? You know, I get emails from people that all of a sudden they're Hemingway. You know, I, I mean, they, 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 they used to write sentences, a sentence to me, and now they're writing a, a novel. Like, I know it's coming from ChatGPT. If I know it's coming from ChatGPT, I know the search engines. Google's much smarter than me, okay? So what can you do? How can you do this? Take your, get your ideas, take your content, make that into content, talk about that content, mold it, craft it. Think about this as a piece of clay. It's gonna spit something out. Now we wanna refine that, make it your own, okay? Then you take that, do a, do a podcast, do a blog post. Now throw that podcast back into, into Descript, get the transcripts from it, put it into ChatGPT. Here's my podcast. I want you to make five blog posts on my content, not the content that it's going out there for. Google's going to, they, they won't penalize you for that. You know, I was also reading an um, article the other day and I'm going through, it came up on Yahoo, I was in Yahoo for some reason, and it was talking about Sylvester Stallone doing Rocky, and how the, one of the fights was based on Mike Tyson. Rocky came out in the 70s. Mike Tyson was the 80s. It was wrong. It immediately flagged me. So check your check what it's coming back with. Also, before leaving Miranda, uh, one thing that a lot of people aren't doing is training it to write, at, like, why would it write as Hemingway when it could write as you? So depending on how often you write, I have a feeling Miranda's probably doing this or should be doing it because she's a phenomenal writer, uh, is to feed it your stuff. Like, I've written hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of material plus tons of long-form posts on Facebook. I fed over 200 posts and i have a thread that's ai aaron and i will tell you you cannot tell the difference it definitely sounds like me and it doesn't sound like sean it doesn't sound like more it's not generic it sounds like me and um same thing with our writers we decided that we're producers uh hopefully the writers don't see this uh, we have trained ai to be all of them so we still use writers however we also have ai that's trained and based off of their last 50 or 60 or 70 articles and it can actually break down Hey, break down Sean Frank's writing style, and it will give you a very specific list that you're like, that is Sean, not Tom, not, you, you get what I'm saying? It's very individualized, like a fingerprint. And then you could say, when I ask you to write as AI Sean, write in the, write in the way that you just described, basically. And so I have an AI Aaron, and I have an AI Zach, and I have an AI Beth, and I, all the people on our team, we have an AI version of them that we trained very specifically, and, um, you know, if any of us have a block, so for me, I fed it hundreds of pages. Well, then I also took like dozens of pages that I didn't actually write. I just wrote bullet points. Like I'd write eight chapters of a 12 chapter book and then three of them are just like bullet points that I never wrote. And I'd feel it and say, All right, write this in AI Aaron style. And you'd be shocked how often it sounds just like I probably would have wrote it, but without the, you know, brain box and whatnot. It, it's so, shocking, but it's your content. Yep. It's exactly. your content that you're feeding it yep. and it's coming back with original content yeah. that is yours. And Aaron's absolutely spot on. That's exactly what I was gonna to touch on is training it in your authentic voice. So those of you who follow me on social media, I'm an avid writer both in the fiction realm with some creative storytelling. In addition to nonfiction, I'm working on a book for conference networking on the decade that I've built going to conferences all over the nation and building my real estate career that way. So in this space, it's really important to me as a writer that AI chat GTP4 creates content that sounds exactly like I would create it or very close to it. So guys, it's okay to be afraid of this. Like being courageous and brave is not not being afraid. It's being afraid and overcoming it and taking daily actionable steps towards your goals. This is a really simple way for you to streamline and maximize your time behind the computer when you are doing marketing and strategy work. So one thing to think about, who, who here has been told over the course of their career, write a blog? 
Anyone, right? So the whole point of writing a blog is it trains SEO, right, on the Google search. So if people are searching for your name, certain keywords are gonna bring you to the top of the list based on SEO. If you guys wanna practice this and you feel intimidated putting it on your social media or places where it really needs to be your authentic voice or you're really not ready to kind of tiptoe into or dive into the deep water, Use it to start writing your blog posts. If you're not writing blog posts yet, it's a great time to do that. That's one actionable thing that you can do today to practice with that's a little bit more behind the scenes. No one's going to be flooding to your blog post as much as they would be your social media account. So it kind of gives you a, a playpen or an area to kind of step and tiptoe into that pond. Pump them out in 10 seconds. I can tell you, I bought a course from Lori Vallon like a week ago because I would figure that I'd learn something before the session. And I bought this course and in an, under an hour, I wrote a 32 page home buyer ebook about Orlando. I'm not even an agent, but I wrote it, wrote it. Uh, it's 32 pages. Like it has graphics as everything. Right. And then we wrote 10 different like long form content pillar articles what's that it would be like 26 things that will reshape orlando by 2026 so we would actually list them and then you could actually go into each of those and write an article about each of them so if i was a realtor with a blog right now i would literally be pumping out like 30 40 50 articles a day i'd probably have a college kid doing it and they would all link back to each other so there'd be the list of 26 things that are happening in orlando by 2026 then there'd be 26 articles that each of them link to based off each one and they'd all be going to my website and it would have something where it's like enter your info to get my home buyer ebook and i'd be just generating leads with a person that's just pumping out tons and tons and tons and tons of content even better if it sounds like you but uh and again i'm not an agent i'm just throwing this out there because in under an hour i just made all this stuff and i was just thinking wow this was pretty simple we also wrote some of you don't know what to do with it well we wrote a 12-week text campaign and a 12-week email campaign for those leads so all of this got done in less than an hour so we created a ton of material that would generate leads we created the actual lead magnet and we created all the follow-up systems i did it in under an hour i'm not an agent i never sold a house i knew nothing about how i've never been a digital marketer and uh so just throwing that up one thing too in this space guys as real estate agents we're very accustomed to talking to each other we know what we need to hear from each other for referrals for you know working on contracts negotiating contracts sometimes we we forget what the consumer's looking for. Even in our social media posts, we're like, oh, I just listed this property and I just sold this property. You know, if you really want to get into the consumer mind, there's nothing that's going to do it quicker or faster than a, like a chat GPT for search or utilizing AI to discover, like, tell me 10 things that the Orlando luxury buyer wants from their agent. Like start using it to explore and discover your customer needs at a much more deeper and intimate level. Uh, for me specifically, most of my business is built on referrals inbound to the Orlando market from cities like LA, uh, Palo Alto, San Francisco, et cetera. So I utilize it to find out what the buyers of those markets want when relocating and choosing Florida as their home state, right? Like what is that uh, buyer profile? What is that target person looking for? And you keep analyzing, like Nick was saying, ask a set of 10 questions, then get narrow and ask five more questions and keep going deeper until you really have it laser focused and you're not shotgun shelling but really pistol shooting towards the target of who your consumer is and how they want to be communicated with love it versus how we want to communicate with them love it and marie let's go to you about some of the automation stuff do you want to give them a little overview of a few ways that you're using automation maybe tell them first about your favorite tools and then yeah. some ways that you're using those tools yes i can do that um so we use slack as like a communicator um between our team it's integrated with Zapier and our follow-up boss and Calendly. And so when people create an appointment online on Calendly, which is where I have people start, you have to go here first. That automatically adds them to my follow-up boss. It automatically sends a message to my Slack channel that says, hey, we have an appointment that's coming up. Um, another way that we are automating things is that I do a lot of Zoom calls. I Zoom with my team. I do you know, buyer calls on Zoom. And I have meeting AI notes that is taking the notes. And so I don't take notes anymore. It's taking it for me and then it emails it to me. And now what, I have another email. I don't want another email. So what we've trained it to do is Zapier is now sending a message to Slack and it's giving us the action items from that meeting. So my whole team knows this is what the meeting was about. This is Amory's action items. This is Chadia's action items. These are Tyler's action items. And we can keep each other accountable in that way. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things that we do. Well, one of the things that we've recently done this week is taking news articles and feeding it to ChatGPT and saying, you know, with a prompt, 
make this into 270 character count for Twitter or X, and then make this an article. They're rewriting the article and put it on LinkedIn. And that has been automated. So I don't even know what my content is going to be today on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And, you know, we've noticed some mistakes that we have to correct, but it's automated. And I'm on those platforms when I, I don't really want to be on those platforms, but people are engaging, people are following. And the more eyes that I'm in front of, the better chance that I can capture a new client. You know, I have 18 years of experience. And so I have a lot of past clients that, you know, just come back to me or send me referrals. But if I want to get new business, I'm not going to pay for leads. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. And I'm a single agent. I Again, I just added one agent to my team this month. And I do think that automating and AI and doing all of those things together are going to level the playing field between big teams and single agents. So I would Love. really encourage you guys to just try it out and, and test it because right now we're in we're like in 1997 when AOL came out. You know, nobody knew what was going to happen. And it's okay to test it out, make mistakes, iterate, fix it. You know, I'm not here to be perfect, but I am here to share some information. And then my goal is obviously, like I said, to gain more time back. And if I can sell the same amount of business in 35 hours a week versus 45 hours a week, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to use all these tools. And you should too. Love it. I love that. I also love the idea of it tiny team or tiny individual competing with a large team. I also do love the idea of a large team being an army now. Uh, with, you know, they might have 15 people, but now they do the work of 500 people because all 15 use AI. And I'm not saying one's better, like obviously depends on what you're trying to do, like spending more time with your family or some people just want to scale at all costs. And you know, there's probably the right answer is probably somewhere in the middle, but um, there's not a right answer because everyone has their own thing. I think it's awesome that all, all y'all are using it so many ways. Jeff, what do you, anything you wanted to add or any automations you want to talk about? Is anybody here using these to do drip campaigns? Chat GPT, write your drip campaigns for your buyers, sellers, for new leads. I think these are really things that we can do. It, it's really important, I, what everybody's talking about, is to be specific. You know, remember, life rewards the specific request, okay? Have the goal, know your avatar that you're going after for each drip campaign. Um, I, I love automation. Okay, automation is great, but don't get caught automating. Okay, know when you have that automation, that drip campaign rolling, that when they respond, you better pause it. Because that email that comes over a day after you talk to Ron that says, hey, Ron, been a long time since we talked. You're caught automating, and you lost trust. People like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Once you lose one of those, it's really tough. Um, so have it, think about, have it, have it write your drip campaigns, but then craft it. Once again, it's a tool. Take it, make it your own. Make sure that it's saying the things that, you want specifically for that person. Um, we, you can use it for so many different things for, you know, chat GPT will identify your avatars. So like or Nick was saying before, you know, who are the people, what are their fears, what are their motivations, what are their wants, their needs, it will tell you. So you can craft your message there. Really yeah. important. Um, all your automation. Love it. I would say that there has to be a human element to all of this. You can't just let it go. Um, you have to be, you know, in there looking at it and making sure. But it's saving me so much time. I can't come up with emails that I'm going to send to all of my nurture people, the cold leads, the buyers, the sellers, the past clients. You know, I can communicate with a thousand people a day, but I have to tailor each one of those messages. It's not going to all be the same. So there has to be that human component whenever you're using any of the AI stuff. It's not going to replace you. It is going to enhance what you're doing. And so that is what you need to kind of get into your mind. Like, this isn't going to replace me. It will enhance what I'm doing. And I, I have one tip that's like um, something simple you could do today. You can go into the MLS and do a quick CMA on your neighborhood, let's say, or any neighborhood, and um, you know, copy and paste that PDF and put it into ChatGPT, and it's going to look like a hot mess. And ask it, what are the top five data points that this data has, that this information has? And it will give you the top five data points. If you're going into a listing appointment, 
in a neighborhood that you're maybe not quite familiar with, that would be a really great, great way to get educated like that. And obviously, we're all going to do the back end work and like our CMAs. But if you aren't sure, just do that. Try it today. Like I put it into ChatGPT and I was like, there's no way this thing is going to know like all these columns and all this information. It's just a copy paste from a PDF of data. And it spit it out really quick. And I was like, wow, I could do this every day. <laughs> Love it. So okay. how many of you guys learned something today? Make some noise. Can you give a giant round of applause for all the panelists and for Nick. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get three takeaways. And if we have time, we'll, uh, we'll let you ask two questions. I'll let Nick answer two. Who has a takeaway you want to share from today? You just yell it out. Somebody. Someone get us started. Who learned something today and wants to share what it was? We are rewarded for specificity. Love it. What else? You have to train it. Yeah, people forget that. It's not that smart. It needs to be trained. What else? Yeah, Karen. Don't mistake speed for quality. Anyone else? Let's get one more. <laughs> Show me the money. Yeah, I like that one. All right. Let's uh, let's take oh, two or three questions from the audience. Nick, if you want to join in, you can grab that mic right there. Who's got a question for any of these people? Caroline, go ahead. So yes, you can automate certain things. You have to have uh, tools like Zapier, which will communicate with you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, and ChatGPT. I mean, it is a whole funnel, and it's very detailed and a little bit complicated. But yes, it can do that. Also, IFTTT, which is, stands for if this and that. Hey, real quick, before we ask the next question, I want to make sure I mention one other thing, aside from the fact that Enzion has the best burgers in town, so you should stick around and join us in the Eden Bar when we're done. But you all should pull out your phones really quickly and go to masterclasscfl.com. That's masterclasscfl.com. And join us next month for a short-term rental success. Sell more house and make more money by leveraging the short-term rental market. We've got a whole bunch of people that specialize in it. Three of them are investors and short-term managers, actually four of them. Uh, one, two of them are also agents. One of them sells a ton of short-term rentals. So long story short, come and join us. We'll be here next month. And that is on September 21st. Sorry to just keep letting the switch, but I don't have a pause button. So, <laughs> so <laughs> masterclasscfl.com. Also, make sure you mark your calendars for the, November, uh, the October session. That's a women's panel. Where you pink? Money goes to Gina McReynolds Foundation. We'll have four or five of the top women in Central Florida real estate on the panel. The next month is the men's panel. That will go to the November Foundation. I wish there was a pause button. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, all right, let's screw it up. But anyway, make sure you do that. Let's, let's get one or two more questions from the audience, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go. That's a great question. Well, I'll tell you what, I think part of that too is a little bit of the strategy that we have going on, right? Because I always talk about, guys, a lot of times it's not the best agent who wins, it's the best marketer, right? A lot of times it's not the best agent who wins, it's the best marketer. Part of the program that we do is we are consistently getting uh, articles published on Fox, USA Today, Google News, Benzinga, Market Watch, about how homeowners and home sellers prefer to work with AI certified agents. And here's the reality, a chance is there's gonna be an agent in your marketplace, we already have a couple in Orlando, and what are we teaching them to do? We take the article, put it into 15 different emails, and they blast it out to their database. And what happens on the news? People hear opinions so much that they tend to become facts, whether we like it or not, that's what the news does. So now we're leveraging the news sources we're getting published on, and people in your marketplace are gonna start seeing an AI certified agent a homeowners prefer to work with one and they're going to read it from fox usa today market watch from multiple different sources multiple different times over and over so if you have an agent in your marketplace that is ai certified there's a chance that every homeowner in your area is going to start getting emails articles news sources saying how homeowners prefer to work with them so that's just one of the ways that we see ai certified agents being the only agents of the future Uh, number one, trademarked. Number two, it's about, um, here's what I would say. First to coin a wins is a big part of it. Just like Lyft will never overtake Uber. There'll be other people in the area, but the news is won't be talking about them. Um, and I think a big part of it too is 
Look, let, let, let's talk about every other certification. I mean, we don't need to go on this page. Let's say how the GRI. Let me say this last one. Value unarticulated is value unappreciated. Just because everybody uses it doesn't mean they know how to tell people they use it. But part of it is how you differentiate yourself. How many of you know an agent who says, I'm a luxury agent. I do luxury. They got like the starter kit with the Hermes belt and the Gucci shoes. And they're like, I do luxury real estate. And then you look up their production and they're doing 350K transactions every day. So there's nothing wrong with faking it until you make it or trying to get to where you're going. You can learn AI and adapt that process. But inevitably, the consumer knows the difference between an agent who is a luxury agent actually helping people buy and sell top end properties and one who's pretending. So inevitably, you'll have the skill set or you won't. And and it, in the end of the day, what really matters is whether or not you're utilizing this stuff to outmarket each other. Like we could debate whether or not his certification is going to be relevant, but that's not really the question as much as what he's teaching to get the certification is obviously relevant. So that's really like the bigger principle of all this. And uh, let's get one more question. One more. Yeah, over here, Bobby. Yeah, so what it does is you can actually take any link off the internet too, which is pretty damn cool. Like I can take a queen video, like queen on stage and put it into Opus and they'll like chop it up. So you can literally take any video, preferably your own, um, and then you put it into Opus and then you just download from there. So it creates some for you and then like it doesn't have their branding on it and you just click download and then you can upload it to any social media platform. I got a quick question for the audience. How many of y'all would be interested in like a longer session that dives deeper into all the tools and specifically how they're used and talks about all this stuff? How many of y'all would pay a little bit to go to that if it was like half a day or all day? All right. Hey, can one of y'all take a picture? Raise your hands one more time. Yeah. All right, we got y'all on video. I'm going to follow up with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. You can say so I could come back. Anyway, um, right, let's give a giant round of applause to all the panelists and the speakers. And a big round of applause to Dave Stewart, Dave Stewart Productions, and his crew. If you're watching the recording, it's because of them. Make sure to follow them. Make sure you join us next month because next month's session is going to be awesome. And I appreciate all of you all for coming out. You want to ask one more question? Everyone looks so ready. Anyone else have a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Can it translate to other languages? And 11 labs can translate your voice into over 100 different languages. Pretty cool. Save us some yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a nugget that, that we didn't talk about. It can also give you information that would copy and paste directly into Google Sheets. So let's just use a hypothetical scenario. Maybe I say something like, help me find every single venue for a corporate events, weddings, or parties that can fit at least 200 people within 25 miles of downtown Orlando. And list in the first column, give me the name. In the second column, give me the address. In the third column, give me the part of town. In the fourth column, give me the website where you found this information. In the fifth column, give me the estimated price. In the sixth column, give me the person to contact or the website to get it from. And it might just spit me out, I don't know, 25 or 50 locations I can hand to an assistant and say, call these places and let's book the next party. Uh, another example we used is we said break Orlando into 12 to 15 different suburbs. Then it broke it down into 12 to 15 suburbs. And I said, great, give me the most photographable place, Instagram place, or every outdoor park, outdoor sculpture, street art, or mural. And it listed, and it, first column, give me the address. Second column, give me the name of it. Third column, give me the, you get the idea. And then all of a sudden, you have 50 locations that I handed over photographers. I was like, all right, here's where you book your next photo shoots. Here you go. Who thinks so, Aaron should do a segment at the training session? Uh, I can't give you any secrets there. I feel like anytime I give away the secrets, you gotta use them against me. So, yeah. Depends on uh, where you're doing it. So, transparently, mostly 2001, I believe is when a lot of it is, but there are plugins and other things you could be using. So for example, like some of it might not be perfect, but I can, I can, you know, it might be three venues left off, but it spit out 25 without me researching. But you could also use things like Monica is an extension on Chrome that is real time. So for example, you could, there are other things. I don't know all of them transparently. I'm sure that someone here does, but there are definitely ways you, you can turn plugins. web access on too. Say it again? You can just turn web access on if you want like really up to date. Tell them, tell them how to do that. Bottom left, three dots, click it, web access. Like it's a little bit like ChatGPT4 is actually 2021. Um, like 
buy first of all just fuck just buy chat gpt4 everybody that's 20 bucks you'll spend don't even tr don't so go free what he's saying is in chat gpt there's a setting you can turn on that turns on web searches which but are real time only if you really want up-to-date information don't do that if you're just trying to get like like the information he was talking about yeah because it might it might uh it as like a, only it use it as like the last necessity if you're looking up like market data like that's the only time you'll do it and even then i still don't think it's at the level that you want it to be but yeah no I mean, I gotta answer my man's question. He's been raising it like to the freaking rooftop over here. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's all about, so basically what he was asking is like, how are you trying to get more up-to-date content to get in front of people so that way it's speaking to your audience better. Is that correct? So so here's what I'll say is like, yes, you can go answer the public, answer the public, you get great content ideas and then plug one of those content ideas into Chad GPT and ask it for 10 different things just like this. But here's what I'll say about Chad GPT. It will give you out-of-date things if you don't know what, like, it's all about training it for your ideal client profile. Look, we have like 15 different prompts that we put in before I even ask it a single question. What are the goals? What are the fears? What are the motivations? What's the internal dialogue? What will happen if they do hit their goals? What will happen if they don't hit their goals? And I'm very specific with who I'm speaking to. There's over 15 different things that we even ask it before I ask it for a single freaking thing. So for me, it's all about like, how are you training it to speak? And part of that too is if you want a good writing style, if you guys know Dan Kennedy, tell it to write in the style of Dan Kennedy. That guy's like the master godfather of marketing. So you can tell it to write in different styles. Um, but yeah, like what I would do is like that answer the public. It's a great place. You can take one of those and ask it, create me 10 different headlines just like this. So I would say it's all about training who you're speaking to first and go as in depth as you can to create an ideal client profile. It's one of the hardest things to do if you don't have chat GPT, but it's one of the easiest, most effective things if you do. Question who, who what are the conversations you're having with your people and bringing that in? And then talking about the conversations, you know, some of the more interesting conversations I've been having with customers has been about interest rates being at, you know, seven and a half percent and they have equity. They bought a home in the last two years and they have equity in the home. You know, is you're speaking specific again, right? You're going, you're, you're not, we're, we're always out throwing wide nets, but in your case, maybe we're just throwing fishing lines out for individual people there and getting that and getting those smaller conversations and talking about, and then you just, you're bringing content out over the weeks. Oh, last week I was talking about this and this is the conversation we had over here. So it, you'll, you'll start grabbing those individual people that are your niche that you're talking about. All right, let's give everybody a round of applause. Okay. Hopefully y'all will come out and, uh, Hopefully, I'll come out and join us next month. Appreciate it, everybody. You can watch this replay on YouTube probably by next week, but if they puts it up faster, then we'll get it faster. If he doesn't, it's because there's like hundreds of gigabytes. Just to be clear, I want to make sure I say this. Dave has to upload hundreds of gigabytes because there's four super high-quality cameras that ran for like three hours. So it's not an instant thing, so don't message me tomorrow. You get this stuff up, and you'll see it next week if you want the replay. And let's give one more shout-out, a round of applause, all the panelists and the Dave Stewart production, his crew. All right, see you all next month, and hopefully you all will join us for lunch because they've got awesome food and a really cool ambiance. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Hey, they do it.